Let's create some free Procreate brushes. You all enjoyed the last video in which we created five Procreate brushes. So here's part two in which we will create five other Procreate brushes. So you will be creating your own free Procreate brushes in no time. Just remember that if you want even more free Procreate brushes, then you can go to freefromflow.com and grab a bunch of my special flow brushes for free. Or if you can't get enough of Procreate brushes, then you can check out my full packs as well. But now let's get started creating our own brushes. During this brush creation tutorial, I will be using a canvas that is 2500 pixels by 2500 pixels. And the first brush we will be creating is a watercolor brush. To do that, we'll be going to the brush menu, of course, and here you'll see the brushes that we created during the other video. So if you haven't watched that one, then be sure to check it out after you're finished watching this tutorial. Now we are going to tap the little plus here to start making a new brush. And first we are going to change the spacing and jitter and fall off settings here. First, let's lower the spacing a little bit to 9%. We'll set the jitter to 16% and we'll turn up the fall off to 12%. Now when you turn up the fall off, the brush will fade when you make a stroke. The end of the stroke is a little bit faded. Next, we'll go to the shape option and we are going to change the shape source. We'll be using a shape from the library that comes with Procreate. So just tap edit, then go to import and then select source library. You can see that Procreate comes with a great database of lots of dabs, lots of shape sources. And we are going to use this first one, the Chinese ink source, and then just tap done. Now let's turn up the rotation a little bit to make the brush stroke a bit more varied. We'll turn it up to 50% and then let's go to grain. Here for the grain source, you can set the texture for your brush. Let's go to edit and again to import and then to the source library. Again, we'll use an image that comes with Procreate. You can see there are loads of them. We want something subtle. Let's go for the textured ink. Then tap done. Now first we'll set the grain behavior to texturized. If you set it to moving, then the grain, the texture will move along with your brush stroke, making it more blurred. But we want that, that paper like texture, we want that to be visible as if we are painting on a piece of paper. And otherwise, if we would use moving, then that texture would just move along and it wouldn't look like paper anymore. Now we'll leave the scale and the depth alone. Let's just turn down the brightness a little bit to make it more visible. Set it to 41%. Next, we'll go to rendering. Now here at the top, you'll see light glaze. That's the standard Procreate well, lightest rendering mode. The uniform glaze is similar to the rendering used in Adobe Photoshop. The intense glaze will have a slightly heavier touch than the other ones, than the light and uniform glaze. The heavy glaze is a strong rendering mode. And when you use that, the opacity of the brush will remain as you mix your paint on the canvas. The uniform blending gives a nice a wet mix effect. And the intense blending, which we will be using, is a great rendering style for wet brushes. And we're making a watercolor brush, so intense blending is the way to go. It will give a full flow effect. And you can imagine that I like the sound of that. Now we'll set the flow to max. That's the amount of paint that will come off your brush. And we'll also turn up the wet edges. This will give that wet edge effect that you see when using watercolors. And I will go to wet mix. You can imagine that the wet mix settings are important when making a watercolor brush, but all of these settings might seem a little bit overwhelming. Now, first of all, the dilution. Dilution is, is what it says it is. It's how much water mixes with the paint. And since we're making a watercolor brush, we want to use loads of water. So we'll set the dilution to 95%. Then we have the charge. That's the amount of paint that is on your imaginary brush. So the higher the charge, the more paint. Let's set it to 55%. 
Then we have the attack. That's the amount of paint that sticks to the canvas. So if you set it really high, it will get the effect of very thick paint. For now, for our brush, let's set it to 20%. Then we have the pull. That's how heavily your, your brush will pull the paint around, including the paint that is already on the canvas. So if you set it high, you will have a brush that is great for mixing colors. And we're making a very wet brush, so let's set it to max. Then we have the grade. That's how chunky your brush is. And we want it to be very smooth. Smooth and watery, so we will set it to, well, to the max, and that's smooth. Next we have blur. This setting applies a bit of blur to your stroke. And we want a little bit of blur for our wet brush. So let's set it to 50%. Blur jitter, that will vary the amount of blur in your stroke. I don't want that, but I do want the wetness jitter. So every time you make a stroke, the wetness of it can be a little bit different. And that's closer to how it works in reality. So that will give a more realistic brush effect. So let's set it to 30%. Next we'll go to Apple Pencil. We will turn off opacity and turn up the size a little bit. Set it to 40%, and that means the harder you press with your pen, if you are using an Apple Pencil, the harder you press, the bigger your stroke will become. And let's also make it bleed a little bit more as we press harder. Let's set it to 30%. So if you press harder, the paint will, well, it will bleed around the edges. Then we can go to Properties. Here you can set the maximum size or minimum size of your brush. If you want it to be a little bit bigger, we can turn up the maximum size to, let's say, to 50% and the minimum size to 20%, for example. If you rather want to use a very small brush, then you can turn that down. And then, of course, we will need to give our brush a name in the About This Brush section. Let's just call it Watercolor. And, of course, you can add your name, you can add a little photo and a signature and then tap Done. Now let's test our watercolor brush. Let's go and grab a nice color. And there you can see we have a nicely diluted watery brush. And when we grab a different color, you can see how it nicely mixes the paint. Next, we will create a ribbon brush. First, let's grab black, tap the color, and then double tap here at the bottom to select pure black. And then let's go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon. We'll set it to rectangle and then turn on color fill. And now let's make a long rectangular shape like this. Then we'll go to the move tool, the arrow up here. And over here, we'll turn on snapping. And that way we can put our rectangle in the exact center of our canvas. Then we'll go to the layer menu again, tap the plus for a new layer. Then go to the color menu, double tap here for pure white, drag it onto the canvas. And then over here, move that layer underneath the one that we just created. And then merge these layers, tap the top one and then select merge down. Now we are going to copy what's on this layer by dragging down with three fingers and then select copy. Now we'll go to the brush menu again, tap the plus to create a new brush. And let's go to shape, then to edit, and then go to import and select paste. Then tap this area and then with two fingers tap on the screen to invert the shape. And then tap done. Now let's go to Stroke Path and turn down the spacing. If you look here, you can see little gaps and we don't want those, so we'll turn down the spacing. You can go to Stabilization, turn up the stabilization if you like, so you can get more steady strokes. You can set the Streamline amount to 30%, for example, or higher if you need it. And we'll set the Stabilization to 25%. Then we'll move to Color Dynamics over here and we'll go to Color Pressure. 
This will only work with an Apple Pencil or a pencil that has pressure sensitivity. So this won't work if you're using your finger to paint. We're going to turn up the secondary color all the way to max. And we'll go to Apple Pencil and turn down Opacity. Because we don't want our stroke to be transparent anywhere. If you have the opacity turned up, then if you press lightly, your brush stroke will be less opaque. So we're going to turn that down. And then let's go to About This Brush and call this brush Ribbon. And then tap Done. Let's create a new layer over here by tapping the plus and turn down and turn off that layer that we have created. And let's test our brush. This brush uses both the primary color and the secondary color. So let's first pick one color. And then over here you can pick the secondary color. For instance, orange. And right now, since the orange is selected, that's the primary color and purple is the secondary color. And for this brush, when you press lightly, you will get the primary color. And when you press harder, you will get the secondary color. And that's how you can create this ribbon like effect. Pressing hard when you go down, lightly when you go up. And let's say you want to change the direction of your ribbon. Then you can go to the brush settings. Then over here to shape. You can move this around. And that'll change the direction. Let's say 90% for example. Then tap done. And when you use the brush, you will get a different direction. On to the next brush. We are going to create a calligraphy brush with a shadow. First, let's go and grab the monoline brush under calligraphy. Use black and I'll draw an oval. Draw an oval, hold your pen in place to make it snap to a quick shape. Create an oval like this and then drag in the color to fill your shape. Then let's go to the move tool again to make sure that our oval is in the center. So make sure that you have snapping turned on and place it in the vertical center and a little bit higher over here. Then let's duplicate this layer by dragging to the left, tapping duplicate. And then we'll move this bottom layer downwards. So go to the arrow tool, drag this layer down to about here. Now we are going to blur this layer. Go to the magic wand, pick Gaussian blur and slide your pen to the right. To about 20%. And now we are going to lower the opacity of this layer. So go to the layer menu, then tap the N and move this to the left. Let's set it to 60%. Then we'll make a new layer. By tapping the plus, place it underneath these layers and then go and grab pure white again by double tapping here, drag it onto the screen. And then let's merge these layers by pinching them together. Now we'll need to copy this layer again. So slide down with three fingers, select copy, and then let's make a new brush again. Let's go back to our five brushes, which will be 10 brushes. Let's tap the plus again for a new brush. Then go to shape, then tap edit, then import and use paste. Now we'll need to invert this again. So tap with two fingers and then tap done. First we'll go to stroke path again and turn down the spacing so we don't have any gaps. You can turn up the stabilization if you need it. I'm going to set it to 70% and turn up the amount of stabilization here as well to 30%. Then let's go to rendering and use the standard Procreate Light Glaze. For the wet mix, we are going to turn down the charge and the pull as well. We won't be using any wet effects here. Then we'll go to Apple Pencil, turn down the opacity and turn up the size. So the harder you press, the bigger your stroke will become. Let's set it to 80%. Now let's go to About This Brush and give our brush a name. Perhaps we can call it shadow and then tap done. Now let's check our brush out. 
Let's turn this layer off, make a new layer, go and grab a nice color. And now when you write something, you'll get a shadow right away. Now, if you don't just want to learn how to create brushes, but if you also want to learn how to use brushes in Procreate, then I would suggest checking out my Patreon page where we have more than a hundred Procreate tutorials ranging from beginner level to more advanced levels. Just check out these results from some of my friends at Patreon. Next up, we are going to create a Procreate grass brush. So first of all, we are going to grab pure black by going to the color menu, double tapping here, and then we'll go to the inking brushes and we'll use the Inca brush. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and I have the size set to 35%. And now we are going to make one leaf of grass. We'll start here, press pretty hard and then press lightly as you go up. This is looking fine. Now let's make a new layer on top again, tapping the plus, drag it under our grass and fill it with white. Then we'll need to merge these two layers. And then we are going to copy it again. So swipe down with three fingers, use copy, and then let's create a new brush in our five brushes folder by tapping the plus. Let's go to shape, then to edit, then to import and use paste again. First we'll need to invert it by tapping with two fingers and then tap done. First, we are going to turn up the scatter. This will scatter our little leaves. Let's set it to 7%. And also turn up the count. So we'll have a lot more grass. Let's set it to 14. And let's also change the count jitter. So that will make the amount of grass vary. Then we'll go to stroke path. Let's turn up the spacing to 20% and turn up the jitter. You see that this will spread those, those leaves of grass. Let's set it to 65%. And let's also go to color dynamics and add a little bit of color variation. We'll use color pressure and this time we'll turn up brightness. So if you press hard, your brushstroke will become lighter, your color will become lighter, and if you press lightly, it'll be darker. Then we'll go to Apple Pencil and turn down opacity. We don't want any transparent leaves of grass because in reality, grass isn't transparent. You can go to Properties and play around with the maximum size, the minimum size, so your grass, you can make it bigger. So let's turn up the minimum size to 20%. And the maximum size to 350. Or 351. And let's turn off Orient to Screen. If you have that turned on, then Procreate will keep the orientation of your screen in mind. And sometimes when you turn your screen, your grass will go sideways. So just make sure that you turn off Orient to Screen. Then go to About This Brush. And let's call it grass and tap done. Now let's try it out. Let's make a new layer on top here and turn that little grass layer off. Let's grab a grassy color. And now when you go over your canvas, you get nice grass. And if you press harder, your grass will be light. And if you press lightly, it'll be dark. Now for our last brush, we are going to create a chain brush and we are going to use a photo as a base for this. I will leave a link in the description so you can grab the same photo. To import a photo, you can go to the wrench and then to insert a photo under add, or you can swipe up from the bottom of your screen, open your photos app. Here I have an album with just one image, but that doesn't really matter. And I could just drag in that image onto Procreate and close that window again. Let's make this a little bit bigger so that we have two parts of the chain covering our canvas. Just not entirely. We need a little bit of space at the top and the bottom, just like this. Then we'll go to the layer menu and turn down the opacity of this layer. 
to let's say 40%. And let's also remove all of the other layers. You can select them by sliding to the right and tap delete. And now let's make a new layer on top of this one. For the brush, we are going to use the monoline brush under calligraphy. And for the color, we need pure black. So go to the color wheel and then double tap here. And then we are going to trace this chain. Now, if you have the tendency to make wobbly lines, then you can go to the settings of the monoline brush, then to stabilization and turn up the stabilization. I'm gonna turn it to 50% Then tap done. And now it'll be easier to follow the outside of the chain. So first we'll do this one. And of course it doesn't have to be perfect. Then we'll follow this one over here. Then the inside. And you'll have to ignore this part of the chain. We just want these two. Then you can drag in the color to fill these areas. You can rotate your canvas if you need to make it a little bit more tidy. And then we can make a new layer again by tapping the plus. Drag that underneath our chain and then fill that with pure white. Then we'll need to merge these two layers again and we need to copy it. So drag down with three fingers, use copy, and then we'll go to our brush pack again, tap the plus for a new brush, then go to shape and to edit, then to import and use paste. And of course we need to invert it again by tapping with two fingers and we also need to rotate it. You can rotate it with two fingers so that we have this orientation and then tap done. Now, first of all, we are going to change the rotation right now. They are all rotated. They are all like this. We want, we want them, but we want them to follow the stroke. You can turn rotation all the way to the right to make it follow the stroke. But these parts of the chain are way too close to each other. So we need to go to stroke path and then turn up the spacing. Let's set it to 50%. And now you can see that they are nicely aligned. Then we need to go to Apple Pencil, turn down the opacity since there are no transparent chains, unless you want to create like ghost chains. Then go to properties and turn off orient the screen. Otherwise, it won't work when you rotate your iPad. Then go ahead and name your brush. Let's call it Chain. Then tap Done. Let's make a new layer on top so we can try it out. Let's grab a color and try out our chain. Just be aware that when you make sharp corners, the chain won't be linked. So it works the best when you make more curved lines. And that's the last brush. I hope you have enjoyed following this tutorial, creating your own Procreate brushes. Now let me know in the comments, what brush was your favorite? And remember that if you want to support this channel, then you can just hit that thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to do even more, and if you want to follow more tutorials, then go check out my Patreon page. I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time.